Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a basic reference elements like points, lines and planes. The object of this video are understand the use of the basic reference elements and learn how to create a new point, new line, new plane by using the various methods. In the last video, we learned about the basic model in flow in KTA V5. In that, we learned to create any geometry, we required a basic reference elements like points, lines, planes. For example, in the most of the parts, the sketch is used to create the solid base feature. And to create a sketch, we require a plane. Now, let's see the use of these elements. They are used as the fundamental elements of the construction elements. Usually, a point defines the location and the position of the geometry into the 3D space. So you can change the position of the geometry by modifying the point. The line defines the orientation of the geometry into the 3D space. So the geometry orientation can be changed by modifying the line. And plane provides a support on which you can construct your profiles. These basic reference elements fall under the wireframe category. So whenever you create a point, line, plane, we have to organize them under this geometrical sets. We can create these basic reference elements into the part design workbench. To create that, we need a reference element toolbar. This toolbar is hidden. So to access this toolbar, we have to remove these hidden toolbars one by one from this bottom of this frame. So here I can get a reference elements toolbar in that I can get point, line and plane command. By using that, we can create the reference elements into the part design workbench. We can also create these elements into the GSD workbench. So I'll press the hotkey Ctrl plus 2 and switch the workbench to the GSD. In the GSD workbench, you can find here point, line, and plane command. By using that, we can create these basic reference elements. Now let's learn how to create a new point geometry. We can create a new point by using seven different methods. Let's see method one. Suppose I want to create a point at 20 millimeter in X, 30 millimeter in Y, and 50 millimeter in Z from the absolute origin. So let's turn on this default planes and let's see the absolute origin location. So this is the absolute origin of intersection of this all three default planes. Now click on this point command and Select the point type as a coordinates. Now define here x as a 20, y as a 30, and z as a 50. And click OK. Now you can see the new point is created with respect to the absolute origin at the given coordinates. Now I want to create a one more point. So click on this point command at the same coordinates, but instead of having that from the absolute axis origin, I want it from this point we just created before. So here in the reference point, select this instead of this default origin, select this point one. Now you can see the new point is created with respect to the point we just created before. Now click OK and second point is also created. Suppose in future I have modified this point 1. So I change the location of this point 1 to x in 30 and y in 40. And click OK. Now you can see the point 2 is also in the update state. So whenever I change the location of this point 1, the point 2 is also get updated with respect to that. Because point 2 is dependent on the point 1. Now let's see the method 2. Suppose I want to create a point on the curve or the edge of any geometry. So select the point command and select the point type on the curve. Then select the curve on which you want to create the point. Now you can create a point at a specific distance from the reference point on the curve. The default reference point is one of the extremities of this curve. You can change this reference point to the another extremity by using this reverse direction button. Select on that and you can change the reference point to the another extremity. 
Now you can define this distance by using two methods. One is the geodesic, another is Euclidean. Let's understand the difference between the geodesic and Euclidean. We'll refer this diagram to understand the geodesic and the Euclidean. In the geodesic, the distance between the point A and the point B is considered along the curve. And in the Euclidean, the distance between the point A and the point B is considered as a minimum distance between them. In the geodesic, you can find a three options. Now, you can see the first option is selected, that is distance on the curve. Now you can create a point by defining the distance along the curve. So define the distance, click on this curve and click OK. Now, click on again this point, select the curve and we'll define the point by using this distance along the direction. So select the second action and here you have to define the direction. So I'll right click here and select the Y component. Now I'm defining the distance of this point along this Y direction. So here I can put the value 50 and click OK. So this point is created along the Y direction at 50 distance. Now again I'll click on this point and select the third option that is the ratio of the curve length. So here I can create the point by defining the ratio. Suppose I want to create a point at a 0.25 ratio. So define that and select your curve and you can create a point at a 0.25 ratio. If you want to change that you can just increase this by using this arrow or suppose you want to create a midpoint you can click on this button. If you want a point on the nearest extremity then you can click on this button and you will get the point on the nearest extremity. Here you can see the point is created at the zero ratio. I will click on this middle button and click OK. Now click on this point command again and here the point I will keep the same on the curve. Select the curve and now select the distance to reference distance on the curve and here you will select the Euclidean method. Now you can define the distance between these two points. So I can just add here value and add 50 and click preview. Now the point is created at a 50 millimeter at the minimum distance between these two points. And now you can see the other options is also disabled. If you want to change the reference point, you can select here and select the reference point. And now the new point is created with respect to new reference point on that curve. Once you get the required result, you can click on OK. Now let's see the method three. Suppose I want to define a point on a plane. Then I'll again go to the point command and here select the point type on the plane. Now we have to define a plane. So select any one of the plane. Here I'll select the XY plane. And you can see I can define here H and V value. So you can either enter the H and V value from here or you can just click your point into the space. If you want to edit that point, you can double click and you can put the H value here that is 100 and V value that is 50. Here, the default point is remains the default absolute origin. And if you want to change that to the another point, you can select that new point. Now, even though that point is not on the plane, this point is get projected on that plane and it is considered as a reference for this new point. Once you get the point at the desired location, you can click OK. Now, let's see the method for. You can create a point on any surface or any face of the solid geometry. Click on the point command and select point type on the surface. Now select the surface on which you want to create the point. Then hover your mouse on that surface to define the location of the point. 
click at the required location that defines the distance of the point from the reference element or the reference point. It also defines the direction by computing the components. You can also define the specific distance by putting the value into this box. So here I'll put 70 and click here. Once you put the 70, you can also redefine the direction. You can click on that required location on the surface and you can define the direction. Here you can see the dynamic positioning. Here we have the two types. One is course. Course means it will directly calculate minimum distance between these two points. So this is the Euclidean method. If you want to measure the distance along the curvature of the surface, so you can select here find. So it is a geodesic method. Once you get the required positioning, you can click OK. I will create a one more point on this surface. So click on this point command and keep this point type on surface. Select the surface on which you want to create a point. Now here I can change the reference point. So here I'll give this earlier created point as a reference point. And now to define a direction, I'll use one of this plane. So I select this plane and define the direction. So now I can define only distance by just clicking on this surface or by using this distance. So here I'll make it 100 and click on OK. Let's see the method 5. If you have the circular profile, ellipse profile, or the spherical surfaces, you can retrieve the center of this profiles and surfaces. So click on this point command and change the point type as a circle slash sphere slash ellipse center. Then here I have one part in that you can see the two circular holes, one elongated hole and one bay. So I'll zoom in that part and I'll select this circular profile and now you can see this new point is created at the center of this circular profile. Again, I'll create on the new point and select the another profile. You can see these are like a semi-spherical or hemispherical part of this spherical surface. So I can also retrieve the center of this spherical surface. So select this point and here select the spherical face. Now you can see the center is created for that spherical sphere. Here we have two elongated holes. I can create the center of this hole and center of this another hole. Now let's see the method 6. Suppose I want to create a point between this first point and second point or I want to find out the center of this elongated hole. So I'll click on this point command and select the point type between. Select the first point and then select the second point. Now I can define the ratio and create a point between these two points at the required location. If I want this point exactly at the midpoint, I can click here middle point. And this point is created at the ratio 0.5. Once I get a desired result, I can click OK. To find the center of this elongated hole, click on this point command. Select the center of this first circle. Select the center of the second circle and click on this middle button. And click OK. Let's see the method 7. You can create a point on a curve at a tangent to the specific direction. Click on the point command and select the point type as a tangent on curve. Now select the curve on which you want a point. Then select the direction. So here you can select a plane or the line as a direction. I'll right click in this box and select Y component. And now I want a point tangent on this curve into the y direction. So click OK. Now here I can see there are the two results. 
because the y direction is tangent to this curve at the two location one is here another is here if you want to keep one of these two elements you can select here second option and click ok if you want to keep all then you can select here through option 3 and click ok so here only want one so click ok now i have to select the required geometry or the required element from it so select that and click ok now this point is get extracted and we are getting as a result so in this way we can create a point by using these various methods in the next few videos we'll see how to create a lines and the planes by using various methods that's all for this video if you like my videos please do share and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching